Hi, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel, where we teach technology and techniques to improve photography for the everyday shooter and better capture the beauty around us. In this video, I'm excited to be talking about shooting raw on the iPhone. Shooting raw is relatively new on the iPhone as it was launched only in iOS 10. So what are the pros and cons of shooting in raw? Is it worth it? I'm sure there are many questions about it as I had. So we're gonna be editing some photos and comparing the difference between RAW and JPEG so we can decide, is it really useful? Even though I've been shooting photos with the iPhone for a long time and have shot RAW with the DSLR, I realized that I had little idea of shooting RAW on the iPhone. So I did some research and I tried it out. And I wanna share with you all everything I've learned. But before we do some comparisons, for some who might not know, let's answer the question. What is RAW? So RAW photos are uncompressed image files that retain much more visual data in the picture than do files saved in the compressed JPEG format. Traditionally, when photographers want more editing flexibility, that's when they shoot in the RAW format. A RAW file is the untouched data recorded from a camera's image sensor. RAW's advantage is the larger content of information for each image file compared to the more common JPEG. Before we compare, let's answer the question, how do you actually shoot RAW on the iPhone? One thing to note is the iPhone's default camera app does not shoot in RAW. It requires you to get a third-party camera app. So let's try a few camera apps and show you how to shoot in RAW. Let's start with the first one called Halide. Okay, so I'm in the Halide interface here. So to be able to shoot in RAW, you simply have to drag up on this bar here and you're gonna see this raw option here. So right now it's already uh, highlighted. Okay, so you can deselect it if you just want a JPEG. But if you want to do raw, you just click on it. So you just snap the picture. And when you want to share it, you just simply go to the gallery and just click on the share button here. And then you, you can choose whether to share JPEG or raw. Okay, so that's shooting raw in Halide. For the second app to shoot in raw, Pro Camera, to shoot in RAW, you have to tap the last button here and you have to choose the format. And as you can see, this last one here is basically JPEG and RAW. And so once that is selected, shooting is basically the same. So you just tap on it and that will already shoot in RAW. So to share this, it's the same thing. You have to go in and just share it, okay? And the same thing, it'll give you that interface uh, whether you want to share it as RAW or you want to share it as JPEG. So basically that's shooting in RAW. Um, now, one thing to note is if you transfer these photos directly to the computer uh, using some file transfer software, you will find that there is only one JPEG file. Uh, the way iOS implements RAW, uh, RAW and JPEG files are actually combined together under a single file. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit some files. So here we have a severely underexposed photo. This one is actually a RAW file. Okay, so you can see it is a raw file because it, it's indicated when you click this info button right here. You see that it is a raw file. You see that the file size is around 10 megabytes, which is pretty large compared to JPEG, as we're going to see later. So let's just go ahead and edit. Let's see what kind of editing we can do with this you know, severely underexposed image. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go into our shadows here just to brighten this up. And then we can actually use this black point to actually bring back the exposure in very dark shadows and it can maybe adjust exposure a little bit okay maybe not so much okay you can see that the raw file nicely brought back the exposure and if you actually zoom in to the dark shadows the noise is very well controlled okay it's very well controlled so that's one advantage of raw you can actually recover very badly underexposed photos Okay, so that's one of the good things. Now we can compare this with JPEG. Okay, so we're here, we're at the JPEG file. How do we know this? If you click on the info button, you can see it indicates as JPEG. You can also see from the side, it's around two megabytes as opposed to 10 megabytes for the raw file. And so if we try to bring this up, okay, so again, same thing, we can open up the shadows. Uh, for JPEG and photos, uh, this contrast works better to bring, bring back very deep, uh, dark areas. Okay, so we can just do that. The black point actually doesn't work very well, as you can see, for some reason, okay? All right, so if you actually um, zoom in, the main problem with JPEG is you can see the amount of noise that's available, right? So it doesn't have as much detail in the dark shadows as opposed to 
the raw file. So JPEG doesn't have much detail because it is a compressed version of raw. Okay, so that's one of its main problems. So if this image was small, then I think it's it would still be acceptable. Uh, but you can see we can't really push it that much because it already is very noisy at this level. See, not as much as the as the raw file. All right, so here we have another photo, and this one is not as underexposed as the previous one. So what we're going to do is uh, try to bring up the shadows. This is a raw file. See, this one is even bigger. It's around 11 megabytes and indicated as raw. And so to bring this up, again, same thing. We're just going to put out the shadows here, which nicely, as you can see, you can push it really far because it's a raw file. You can see there's not much noise at all, right? So there's not much noise because it is, it is not as underexposed as the previous image. And you can even push this further by even the black point if you wanted to. All right, so let's compare this with the JPEG. So you can see uh, we're going to do the same thing, bring up the shadows here and the contrast a little bit down here to bring that up. So if you zoom in, you can see that it's for JPEG, has very little noise. Okay, so JPEG does actually a pretty good job as long as it is not severely underexposed. So you can see that the effect is pretty similar. The JPEG quality is similar to the raw. Now here is another problem image. In this case, the image is severely overexposed. Okay, and the problem with overexposure is it loses a lot of detail in the highlights. So this is a raw file. So we're going to attempt to bring back the detail on this severely overexposed shot. So you see it's a raw file, 12 megabytes, again, a very big file. Right, so to bring back the exposure, let's just lower down the exposure a little bit here. And then maybe lower down the highlights here. Okay, and then we can maybe add a bit of contrast. Uh, and the, just in the black point here. Okay, maybe increase the black point. Okay, so you can see that we did bring back some details if you actually compare it. So this is the original and this is the new one. So we actually did bring some details in the highlights, but not everything. Now let's compare this with the JPEG. Okay, so for the JPEG, let's try to do say, the same thing, lower the exposure a little bit. Okay, and then the highlights. So you can see the highlights it just turns gray, you see? There is no detail whatsoever. So in JPEG, the penalty for overexposing is much greater. Okay, so here's another uh, problem image. In this case, the white balance is not set correctly in giving it a blue cast. So we're gonna try to use RAW to or try to recover the correct cast or the correct temperature for this. So from photos, what you wanna do is click this picker button, okay? And basically just look for a gray area and it will try to do some adjustment. As you can see, it did a good job of adjusting or you can pick another area. So let's say this one, right? So, okay, this one works better. Then you can also make some adjustments in the slider, this warm slider here, right? So if it's very warm, you can see it's very warm, if it's very cold. So you can make some adjustments to remove the cast, okay? So that's how it looks like. So this is before and it's after. So it looks uh, pretty good. Okay, so that's one uh, good thing about RAW. It's known to be able to uh, correct the white balance in post. Okay, so let's just compare this with JPEG. Okay, so this is the same file, right? So if we try to recover the, the uh, change the white balance of this, okay, so we're gonna go here, same thing. We're gonna go in the photos under color here. Okay, so we have to uh, rely on this cast. So let's just go ahead and, and make some adjustments here. Okay, so this is basically you can do some adjustments in this slider, okay, if you want, uh, or you just change the cast to make it warmer. So this is very cold and this is uh, very warm. But you can see that it doesn't uh, really look natural. Uh, so the JPEG can actually uh, change the color temperature as well as the raw file. So what are the pros of raw? Well, we can we saw that it does a better job of retaining detail in both the shadows and the highlights. RAW allows you to recover a badly exposed photo, and so it's highly recommended to use RAW in poor lighting conditions or high contrast situations where you probably want to recover some detail. Uh, another use of RAW is for correcting bad color temperature, bad white balance. It allows you to do that, to do that in post. Uh, or correcting bad color casts. But of course, RAW requires you to do editing. Definitely RAW is, has higher image quality, uh, especially when you do editing of badly exposed images. Now, what are the cons of RAW? 
the file size of raw is large as you've seen it's around 10 to 14 megabytes so this is easily three to five times bigger than an equivalent jpeg so as a result it's impractical to shoot in raw if you are concerned about storage space and you're going to take a lot of shots also because the file size is so big it does take a lot more computing resources so when you copy files and you edit files uh, with software you'll find that there's a bit of lag so you probably have to wait a second or so um, you know to get certain things done and as you saw in the examples jpeg is actually pretty good in most situations and in many cases you won't be able to tell the difference between a raw and a jpeg file or maybe you don't expect the images to be viewed in a large monitor i believe jpeg will suffice for most situations and there really is no need to use raw files so i hope you found this video helpful if you did do consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like till the next video